Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. My name's Tim, and I'll be your host. In today's episode, uh, getting ready for the College World Series, we actually have the uh, one of the regional tournaments in our city this weekend. Uh, the Louisville Cardinals are hosting. So keeping with that theme, we're going to talk about the baseball graphic that you see right there. And let's go ahead and bring that in in full screen. And you can see it as it is in uh, GT Title Designer. Over to the right-hand side, you can see all the different components of this uh, graphic. And if you notice, I'm very specific when naming these components because later on when we get back over to uh, VMix UTC and we start mapping it, we want to make sure that we're mapping it to the right component. So I try to be very specific uh, when I'm doing this. So let's go ahead to full screen and look at the graphic. And this is what the graphic looks like. Uh, you can see on the far left hand side, we have team A and team B. So we'll go ahead and uh, put some uh, teams in there. Okay, so you can see now it says the uh, cards and the cats. And I'll just go ahead and show you the layout really quick. Next to the cards, you'll see uh, to the right, you'll see a spot. This is where their score will go. Uh, next to the cats, to the right of that, you'll see um, a area there that's where the home team score will go the area there in the middle it's going to show the runners that are on base along with the inning and the top and bottom of the inning indicator the next section the top part of that section is going to be balls and strikes under that we're going to keep track of how many outs there are uh, to the right of that in that last section is an area for a logo and you can also put uh, sponsors uh, during the game in there if you'd like. And then the last thing is going to be the pitch count for the pitchers. So let's go ahead and switch to this look right here. This is what the layout looks like in VMix UTC. And this is how we're going to control the graphic. And uh, you can see where we uh, put the names of the two teams in there. And let's look and see behind the buttons what we've got uh, going on here. And you can look and see that it is a text field widget. The text field widget is one of the ones that I haven't uh, gone into in a whole lot of detail because there's actually quite a bit you can do with the text widget. But both of the home uh, team and the visitor fields right here, uh, these are text widgets. And you can see where um, I've done the input map mapping here. The input is baseball scoreboard. And then these are all the components uh, within that particular graphic. And we have this one set to visiting team name. Going over to the home team, we'll click on that. And it's the same thing. It's the same, the exact same input, and but this time it says home team name. Underneath of it is uh, how we keep track of the score. So if you want to add uh, one run to the home team, you click the plus one button and you can see where one run is added. We'll add a whole bunch more for the cards. And then over for the cats, um, this is where you control the score for the cats right here which is the home team, and then you just click on the plus one button, and it's gonna add one. If you go down here to the bottom where it says clear score, if we click on that, it should set them back to zero, and it does. This next section here is how we keep track of balls and strikes, and you'll notice there's a couple things going on here. When I push this, uh, when I push the button here for a ball, you'll see it does change to a count of one ball and no strikes, but you also noted a notice with the pitches uh, that it added a pitch to that. Uh, so let's go ahead and click it one more time. Now it's two balls and no strikes. It is tallying the pitches and that's the second pitch. Let's go ahead and add a strike. It did add a strike and it added one more pitch. So let's go ahead and make the count uh, full. We'll add another ball. We'll add another strike. And the reason for that is we have another button right here that says uh, foul ball so if you have a long at bat uh, you want to make sure that the you are getting the correct number of pitches for the pitcher so at, at this point with it being a full count anytime after this uh, there would be a foul ball you would click foul ball and it adds uh, one more pitch we'll click it again and it adds one more pitch now you're going to have times during the game where you're going to have a, uh, a, a hit or an error and sometimes you have to wait on that for the official score and then maybe a pitch or so later you'll see it on, their, on the scoreboard there at the field that it's been given a hit or an error. error. In this case we're going to go ahead and click on hit and you can see it takes away the logo and puts in hit but it does add a pitch. Since that ball was put in play we still need to count that as a pitch. 
And then over here for error, we'll do the same thing. We'll click on that button. Takes away the logo, it brings an error. And I believe it accounted for the pitch, but let me uh, click it one more time. Yes, it does account for the pitch. So let's take a look at these buttons. For foul ball, what we've done is this says execute link, and then the link for this is add pitch. So let's go up here under pitches, and you can see we do have a few of these text uh, tick boxes uh, checked. One's for reset, and the link for that is clear pitches, and the other one is plus one, or to add one pitch to the pitch total, and that uh, link is add pitch. And that is indeed what we have on this foul ball. We'll go back and look at that again. It does, it says execute link, add pitch. So what's different about these buttons for hit and error? Well, what we're doing is we're using that um, command that we've used before, set visible on and set visible off. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a pitch to the pitch total, and then we're gonna set visible off on the scoreboard index zero, and index zero under images is the logo. So it's gonna turn the logo off, and then it's the next uh, command is set visible on for index three, and that's gonna bring in the word hit. We're gonna leave that on for 10 seconds, and then we're gonna turn it off again, and then we're gonna bring back in that image, which was the logo. So we'll go ahead and click on that one more time and see how all that works. You'll notice there is a green border around this button right here. Anytime there's a script running in the background, uh, that border will turn green. So you also have some other instances where you have uh, a wild pitch. It still counts as a pitch, so we'll go ahead and click wild pitch. You can see the number changes to 12 pitches, and it also takes that logo out and brings in wild pitch. Same thing for a pass ball. Uh, sometimes you have to wait on the official scorer's ruling for that. Uh, we want to make sure that that is tallied as a pitch, and uh, then it will pop up whether it's either going to be a wild pitch or a pass ball. Another instance where we want to make sure the pitch gets tallied is on uh, hit batsman. So let's click on this, and it did tally one additional pitch. And there's nothing really special about these two buttons. All we're doing is we're turning the logo off, and then we're turning the text on for these particular buttons. The one was wild pitch. The other one's pass ball. On a hit batter, we don't change the logo and bring that in. All we do is make sure we're counting for a pitch. So this next button here we have is a home run. Let's go ahead and click on that. You can see that does count as a pitch. It's, it's a pitch the pitcher wishes he could have back, but it's a pitch nonetheless. The pitch tally goes up to 15. The word home run comes in, stays in for 10 seconds, and then it brings the logo back in. We have a button here to clear balls and strikes. Well, before we get to that, let's take a look behind the ball and strike buttons. Here we have a couple of the tick boxes tick for reset and plus one. Under the reset, it says clear balls, and under the plus one, it says add ball. And then you can see where it was mapped to. It's on that portion of the scoreboard. It's mapped to the one that says balls. Under strikes, same thing. We have a couple tick boxes checked. When we reset it, it's gonna clear the strikes, and when we uh, activate it, it's gonna add one strike. And then let's look under this, where we clear balls and strikes. We're gonna execute a couple links. The first link is clear balls. The second uh, link uh, that we're uh, executing is clear strikes. So let's go ahead and click on that and see what happens. And it does, it sets our balls and strikes back to no balls and no strikes. This right here is going to allow us to keep track of the outs. Let's look at this button here. Again, a couple tick boxes checked. The reset button is clear outs. The plus one button is add one, uh, I'm sorry, is add out. So let's click this button. You can see where one out was added. We'll click it one more time. The second out is added. At the end of the inning, when the third out is tallied, we'll go ahead and reset the uh, outs. We'll click on this button right here and it takes it back to zero. So let's look at the out, uh, the out button. Execute link, add out, and we got the add out from this button right here. When we click it, when, it, when we execute the link to add, to add out, it's gonna add one to our outs tally. Look behind the pitches button. Again, we have two of the tick boxes ticked. Under reset, 
that link is clear pitches and under add pitch we're going to add one pitch to the total under the plus one if we miss a pitch or whatever or we need to go back and correct it you can do it by these buttons right here that'll down button uh, the down arrow takes one away the up arrow adds one and then when we want to clear it we're going to use that uh, link that we added in there we're going to execute the link and then that link is going to be clear pitches so let's see if that works for us and it does it takes the, the pitches back to zero this button right here this is a list widget and I manually added all the uh, innings in I just went from the first to the 12th but uh, if you've seen me do these tutorials before you know if you click this plus button right here uh, you can add uh, something in on the fly so we're going to go ahead and do that and adds an available line at the bottom and you can see where I just added 13th inning in there. So let's go to the drop down menu, change it to the seventh inning. We're going to do the seventh inning stretch. Coming to the ninth inning, we're going to have a tie ball game. Let's add a couple runs. So we're going to add four runs to that. One, two, three, four. Final score six to two. And the game was never really that close. All right, so that's going to be our tutorial for today. If you're enjoying this video series and you're getting something from it, please give me a thumbs up and a like. Make sure you do stop by our website, www.onemanstream.com. Uh, once we finish this tutorial series, I'll have the completed graphic uh, up there and you'll be able to download it along with any of the assets that you might need. Make sure you do subscribe so you'll be alerted when new videos are posted. And as always, thank you so much.